cruise in the waves. Oh. Wait a minute, we're still on the trailer. Got a lot of work before we can turn this key. First step in work performing any maintenance on a Mercruiser style outdrive is always to place the unit in forward gear. That allows you to fully disassemble and assemble the outdrive unit and know which gear it's supposed to be in. Mercruiser 350 Magnum, just a little girl with an Alpha 1 outdrive. Still pretty clean for a 1989. We got the first battery installed over here. We need to put another brand new battery there and get all the cables hooked up. We have a brand new Rural King Marine dual purpose battery. This is part number MRU24. We're going to get that installed. I got my dielectric grease. So while I was at Rural King picking up the new replacement battery, I picked up this. I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Uriah, Urea uh, Products Battery Terminal Post Cleaner Kit. It comes with a brand new uh, wire brush style cleaner for your terminals, some battery terminal cleaner spray, and some protector spray. I don't normally use this, I usually just use dielectric grease, but we're going to give it a go on this uh, battery and see how we like it. If you have a strong preference one way or the other for battery terminal cleaner or protection spray, this is the common stuff that, you know, turns the battery tops red when you spray it on. Uh, drop down in the comment section let me know. let me know what you think. Uh, I normally don't use it, but uh, we're going to give it a go this time. I always wire tie one side, that way I know which side's the ground, which side's hot. The hot side always has inline fuses on it, at least in our case. So this will be the hot side, this will be the ground, and they're all bunched together. Hit it with our terminal protector. And done. This is a Mercruiser Alpha 1 Gen 1 1989 model. Um, the Gen 2s are very similar, uh, but some of the parts are different. This particular unit, it has a uh, burper oil reservoir on it, which this is this braided steel line that goes inside to a backup reservoir for gear oil for the unit. So the first step is to remove this guy but we want to plug it so we don't lose all the good oil out of the reservoir inside. So we got our fancy high-tech rubber hose. So we're going to unbolt that. This hose has a bolt on the end of it. And then we're going to jam this hose on the end of it. Drape it over the top of the outdrive. Right now, we're just going to remove the lower unit and replace the impeller pump on the inside. Look at that beautiful blue high performance gear lube that's 13 bucks a quart. Save that. Alright, I think that should keep all of our gear lube from uh, draining out and wasting it. It is just gravity feed, so shouldn't really have a whole lot to worry about there. At least I hope. Real quick, if you want to perform a test so you know when you're reassembling the outdrive, the propeller, when it's in forward gear, will be blocked for uh, counterclockwise rotation, but it'll freely pop over in clockwise rotation. Blocked counterclockwise, and that's forward gear. I'm gonna Keep that in mind 
when you're reassembling this that you have it in the same uh, same gearing when you put it back together otherwise you might have a problem so now we're going to remove the anode this is a sacrificial I believe it's zinc material helps protect the outdrive from corrosion by corroding this piece first and you need to remove this because the trick is there's two bolts underneath this that fasten the lower unit to the upper unit. The bolt for it is a socket head cap screw and it's down in this hole right here. Last time I replaced this uh, the socket head cap screw wanted to round out so I had to purchase a straight in square hex uh, typical hex keys have ball ends, so I recommend always using a square key on this because sometimes some crap will get in there and you don't want to strip it out. Something like pretty good. I stand corrected, there's only a single socket head, single socket head bolt here that holds the two halves together. We have two nuts here, and then we have some other nuts on the, on the side. But I'm going to pop these loose since we're right here and looking at these. I'm not going to take them all the way off. Oh yeah, look at all those zebra mussels in there. Yummy. I'm going to leave this nut on just a couple threads because it's one of the easier ones to remove with a ratchet. Remove a nut on the front side and then a nut on each side. So looking at the uh, outdrive unit from this side, we removed the sacrificial zinc piece, a socket head cap screw that was in there holding the two halves together. We removed a nut that's on a stud here loosened this one but didn't remove it uh, we can remove that one real easy each side if you're looking directly at the side of the unit has a nut and a stud retaining the two halves together here and then also on the back side there's a nut in this area right here so we're going to remove this guy a bunch of zebra muscles in there Gonna remove this guy next, and then we'll start working on the sides. Here's the lower unit separated from the top half, and this guy right here. This is the impeller pump housing. This is what we need to replace, and we want to install a new one. Have the Quicksilver brand kit. Let's see if I can hold it still enough for you to get the part number. Focus. This is a Quicksilver brand kit. This is an aftermarket group of Mercruiser, I believe. Inside the box we have a new impeller pump housing. This is the actual impeller itself, the part that does the pumping. A new tube that goes on the top. Bag of gaskets. It's like a new screw, even come with a new drive key. And we have a big bag of gaskets. Pretty sure you don't use all the gaskets in this kit. When you take it apart, note the old gaskets, the shape and orientation of them. And this is the new, I believe, plate that the impeller rides against. All right, let's get that thing off of there and get the new one on.
don't lose your drive key for your impeller pump. Well, it doesn't appear that our new kit come with a no lower unit. Uh, in previous years, the, the kit would come with this lower level housing, this plastic piece that's beneath this. Doesn't look like we get it on this kit. So if you want this lower level plastic piece, you're going to have to order a different kit. Give you a view from this side. This bolt right here uh, is a captive bolt, and that's the bolt that we removed uh, that holds on the anode. It came out kind of hard, but it looks like we put Loctite on it last year. Previous years, uh, it fell off and destroyed a prop, so make sure that does not come off. Probably put Loctite on that again. Here's a lower level plastic housing. See there's a awesome zebra muscle in there. I hope that fell in there when I removed the top half. Um, you want to make sure this is all cleaned out and there's no junk in there because this is where it sucks the water to pump through the engine. This is your gear selector. It rotates. Keep in mind there is a washer here that you don't want to lose. If you lose that washer, your gear selector on the top half will fall down too far and disengage from the selector uh, on the shifter. Over on this side, this passage right here, focus. This pat passage right here, there's a rubber O-ring there. This connects the top oil uh, cavity with the lower unit and feeds the entire lower unit with oil. So we're going to have a new, uh, hopefully have a new uh, rubber gasket for that. Make sure you don't lose that, it's very important. So now we're just going to put a rag in there and clean off this shaft. I probably should have done that first. I was kind of hoping it would come off with the uh, housing, but it did not. So we'll have to scrape that off. So next step now is you want to get your impeller in the housing. What I like to do is take a look at the old impeller and see which way the vanes are positioned and try to position the new impeller with the vanes angled the same direction because they have to be bent to go in the housing. Always take some marine grease and lube up the housing so I don't cut or damage the impeller. Here's where it gets interesting. This thing's squirrely and it's kind of stiff. There she is. Got the one vein angled the wrong way. I want to try to correct that ever so carefully. I forgot to put grease on the face on the bottom side, so I'm going to take it all the way out, pull it out slightly, and you can reach in from this side and grease it. Now she's ready to go back on the outdrive. We just need to find our correct gaskets. As I mentioned earlier, keep your old, uh, I believe you call this a thrust plate. This is what your impeller rides against. That way you can look at this and identify the correct gaskets.
This appears to be the correct gasket for the top side. We have the new thrust plate and then the bottom gasket. Always keep them to compare because there are several different variations. When you install these, always put a nice thin film of grease on both sides of the gasket. So a very important step here, this is the drive key. Our kit came with a new drive key and it goes against the side of the shaft here on a flat spot and has to line up with this round groove inside your impeller. If it does not, your impeller isn't going to spin and that's no bore now. Right here's your drive key. It sits on this flat spot here. Take your housing and slide her back on. It's a little tricky to get that to line up, but you put the impeller close. Make sure you don't pull the key out by rotating the shaft a little bit or by pushing on it. And once it lines up, it should just slide down real easy. Put all our washers and nuts back on. Kit also did come with a new screw. This is a really coarse thread screw with a plastic housing screws into the lower portion. Install that. Just gonna work your way around, slowly snugging all the bolts up. Okay, those are good. We need the little rubber gasket that goes down here. This guy, I believe it keeps the water from blowing at the top here. Grease this up and slide her down. Get our new water tube, apply a little grease to that. This is more or less just a, a guide to line the lower half with the upper half pickup tube in the upper unit. This tiny orange gasket here. This is the new gasket to connect the upper housing and the lower housing. It goes right here as we talked about earlier. I just put a little dab of grease on it that way it'll uh, hold it in position. He's ready to go back on the boat. Before I forget, I also like to put, not that it really seals because it's all submerged in water. Uh, the only thing that seals on this is the water tube seals to the upper unit. This shaft has a seal up here on the upper unit. And this oil seal over here, obviously. And that's really the only thing that seals this unit to the top side. This part probably isn't necessary, but I've been doing it for ever, so no sense changing now.
All right, new impeller is installed. A little grease up here where the seal goes and on the spline. Bottom of the lower unit, right down here. You need to use a very large screwdriver. Some of them have a hex key if it was replaced, but this is just a flat, and it's extremely difficult to take out. So we have our special screwdriver we keep with the boat stuff. Once we remove this, all the gear oil that's in the lower unit is gonna come pouring out on the floor. Uh, but there's a gasket in there, so we're gonna try to fish the gasket out. Then we're going to hook up our magic marine pump to pump in our new gear lube. There it is. I don't know if you caught that or not, but we did end up fishing the little gasket out of there. Lost a little bit of oil in the process, but you want to make sure you do that before you fill it up because you're going to lose some trying to dig it out anyways. So now we're going to lower the outdrive so it's level where it's in the right position uh, or normal operating position. We're going to pump in the gear lift down here. It's going to go up, fill in the upper unit up here where the bevel gear sit is. We're going to pump it until it comes out of this top port up here. Yeah. Yeah. Down, 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 down,
it will let you know if you have a leak on your out drive and or if water is getting in your out drive because this will change colors <clears throat> unfortunately if you notice there's drips back there and this thing's leaking there just went another drip so we got to take this off and try to figure out what's going on okay this is the tank cleaned it all out uh, as you saw inside it was leaking and unfortunately if you look at the bottom where the fitting mounts into the unit it's cracked in multiple spots you can see it that line's not supposed to be there those lines over there are not supposed to be there so it's leaking from where this fitting seals on the tank this is the same tank that we replaced three years ago it held up for three years but it ended up breaking in the exact same fashion as the original one so I think there's a design error on this guy and we need to switch to the new tank style I really didn't want to but the fact that it broke in the same fashion as the original with a crack on the bottom that's no good this thing is no good so right now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug that line inside the boat until we get a new tank engine all nice and warmed up now we're down in the engine bay have our oil extractor pump you take this line stick it down in the dipstick tube and pump all the oil out of the engine into that bucket for an oil change Well, that's pumping. It's taking forever. I'm going to go ahead and install a new fuel filter. This is a Quicksilver part number for the focus. And it's right down there. So we're going to try to spin that off without spilling gas all over. I'm going to just put a bag around it. They're kind enough to wrap electrical wires around it from the factory. Nice and convenient. Bag didn't work with a piss. Okay, new fil fuel filter, check. Didn't manage to do it without cutting myself on something. Sharp stuff everywhere down here. All right, now we gotta get over there to the other side and get the oil filter. Ah. The part number there. 
I think this one might be for our outboard, but it's basically the same as the OEM. Might be a high performance one or something. We had a massive problem taking it off because the plastic bag we tried to use wasn't working very good. Usually it's a grocery bag. Uh, and when I squeezed it to remove it with those junk filter pliers, it made it come out the top. Need a good filter wrench. Finally, I think it's done. Don't pull a rookie mistake and forget the plug. This old graphic's looking pretty old. This is repainted on by an older fella. He's probably long gone now. By the name of Clark Fisher. Hand painted graphic. And it was always awesome. But over the years, I'm thinking it was probably around 2001 or 2002, he paint, hand painted this on. And he painted it on originally in 1989 and 2001 or two was a repaint. And it just looks awesome, but all the paint's starting to peel. So it's time for a new one. We had a brand new graphic made based on this geometry. We're going to see how good it lines up. Here's a new graphic. We're going to see how well it matches. That's really close. It's really close to the original. But it is off just a little bit. I think we're going to have to just take off the old and put on the new because it, it lines up really closely, uh, but it's not 100% perfect. And I think we got a little bit of a scaling issue. It's all the uh, shapes look really good. It's just off ever so slightly when you get all the way to the end. Alright, the new name looks really good. It's kind of a pain in the butt to put on there. I don't know if you noticed, but we had uh, some soapy water per dad's uh, recommendation. It worked great, but we had a little problem down here, especially with the small letters, getting them to stick. Maybe the key is waiting a little bit longer to peel it off, but my impatience and wanting to get done said, we got to do this now. Uh, if you know a better way or a better trick or you know how long you should wait after you apply it for the soap to dry, uh, 
before peeling off the front, drop down in the comments section and let me know. Look at this. Keeping up. It's all on there again. Looking good. New impellers in. Outdrive is ready to rock and roll. She's filled up with gear, fresh gear lube. One thing I forgot to mention is you want to get in here and you want to check the bellows or boots. This one right here is the main drive shaft bellow and this is the shift uh, cable uh, bellow or boot. You want to check these for cracks, any wear uh, or deterioration and if they're worn or heavily cracked you want to replace those. If those boots are damaged or bad that'll make your boat sink. You don't want your boat to sink. So definitely check those. You also want to grease all the grease points on your outdrive. You have the hinge pins, one on each side, a top grease point here, and then one really important one here in the corner, that's your gimbal bearing. You want to make sure you grease that. Ahoy! We got the boat all ready to rock and roll. Let's get the trailer ready, get this thing prepped, and get it in the water. We'll go over a few points here and show you what's important so you don't look like an idiot at the boat ramp. Which we may or may not do because we're on camera. You want to check the condition of your outdrive, check the condition of your boots, water inlet hose, your bellows, whatever you want to call them, make sure those are good. Check and refill your gear lube. You want to make sure your plug's in. Very important before trying to put it in the water. You got your rear straps for training the boat to the trailer. You want to remove those. Well, the next thing that's critical, always unplug your trailer wiring before backing your boat into the water, or your boat trailer into the water. That way your trailer lights don't short out. Personally, I always leave the winch and the safety chain attached while backing the boat down the boat ramp. That way, if your bunks are wet or slippery, your boat doesn't slide off the trailer. Almost had a, a possibility of the boat falling off the trailer one time. Ever since then, always leave this on until the boat's in the water, at least partially. You'll see here in a minute. We've got a pretty busy boat ramp behind us. We're going to try to pick a side of the, the uh, boat ramp such that the wind will blow the boat into the dock. That's the easiest solution. If you have an opportunity to pick that choice, pick that. Looks like we want to shoot for the port side. So we're going to attach ropes on the port side and try to back her in the, uh, the water. All right, we just unhooked the winch. She's pretty much floating for the most part. I'm gonna go back just a little bit more so she floats off the trailer. The guy's got the boat by the rope, so it's not gonna go anywhere. Then we're gonna leave the truck and trailer here, start it up, get it up to operating temperature before we pull the truck out, make sure there's no problems with the engine or the outdrive. floating very critical run your engine compartment blower for at least five minutes to exhaust any of the uh, gas fumes that could be present in the engine compartment you don't want to blow up <laughs> first jump over that's pretty impressive for not running for two years not as critical when putting the boat in the water but typically it's very critical when pulling the boat out you don't want the rear drive tires to get in the water or to get too wet otherwise you're gonna have a traction problem 
right now we're still just above the water line so we're doing okay but we did get a little part of the wet ramp again not overly critical on the in, on the putting the boat in but taking it out could become problematic you don't have to put the trailer as far in when taken out there we go Baby. just be careful the life jacket doesn't shove up or underneath yeah i'm kind of holding it down on her Welcome to the wonderful cold dock of Sandusky Bay on Lake Erie. This is a interesting uh, area of uh, the bay. This is where uh, rail cars full of coal will come down, uh, obviously on a track, and this tall structure on the left will flip the rail car over, dumping the coal out on a conveyor to I'm guessing go into one of those silo bins and or be loaded into a freighter and many times throughout the season you'll see a very large uh, freighter docked here uh, being loaded with coal. It's kind of a cool thing but also a very uh, dirty thing and spreads coal dust all over the place. If you uh, made it this far along in the video, I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. This one's kind of a long one. Uh, went over quite a few things on the boat. Uh, quite a few different areas and aspects from outdrive repair to uh, changing the engine oil and you know something as simple as even installing the batteries. So if you do uh, get into boating, just keep in mind that it is a very expensive hobby and always requires tons of maintenance and tons of parts that are more so expensive than anything else because it says boat or marine. If you uh, like this video don't forget to give me a thumbs up leave all your questions and comments in that section below and I'll try my best to answer those and don't forget to hit that subscribe button on your way out we got a lot more different video content coming your way